and uh, and of what Ireland should be a part of your global expansion story. 今天下午呢，大家会有机会聆听到很多来自维多利亚州的高管以及来自墨尔本有戏制作的一些专业人士来讨论，为什么墨尔本应该成为您在全球投资版图当中最重要的一环。Now we're also pleased that we're able to host today's event, an event that would not be possible in many other parts of the world, and we recognise that it is only possible because of the commendable work done by the Shanghai Municipal Government in pandemic control. We're very happy to host today's event, because in pandemic control, many places in the world are not possible. We clearly understand that the work done by the Shanghai Municipal Government in pandemic control is the work of the Shanghai Municipal Government. Now, uh, let me briefly introduce you to what we do. So, the Victorian government has five offices in China, here in Shanghai, Beijing, Nanjing, Chengdu, and Hong Kong. And we're making our presence where we, we have the largest presence of all state governments in Australia. Now, let me introduce you to what we do. 呃，上海一些工作，在维多利亚州政府呢，在中国有五个办事处，分别位于上海、北京、南京、成都和香港。这也使得我们维州成为澳大利亚所有州里面在华具有最大规模的州政府机构。Our, our offices are not diplomatic. We're a business-focused team who look to create opportunities for businesses between China and Victoria, and in areas of trade, investment, and education. 那我们办事处呢，并不是一个外交机构，而是专注于商业开发，希望在贸易、投资和教育领域为中国和维多利亚州之间创造更多的机会。Now, 2018, Victoria became the first and only government in Australia to sign up to the Belt and Road Initiative because we have a government that is committed to building relationships with our partners here, both in government and in industry. Really? 二零一八年的时候，维多利亚州成为了澳大利亚第一个，也是唯一一个签署了“一带一路”倡议的呃州政府。因为我们州政府呢，一直致力于与中国的呃政府以及行业伙伴建立关系。Now we also host the Victoria Pavilion at the recent China International Import Expo (CWA) in Shanghai, when we had over thirty Victorian companies exhibited. This was the fourth year in a row that Victoria has participated. 那我们也在最近举办的中国国际进口博览会 （CIE） 上面，呃，带来了一个维多利亚展馆，有三十多家维多利亚州的企业参展，也是我们州连续第四年参与此次盛会。Now I mention all of these points because I know that for investors, the decision-making process will be, you know, will the government support them in this investment? I can stand here today and I can say that yeah, we will. The Victorian government will support you. Furthermore, we are encouraging. Now, I particularly want to list the following points. I 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 want to list But for games companies, you will hear today that we have several financial packages available for you if you invest in Victoria. 澳大利亚呢，我们有很多为投资者专设的金融援助。对于游戏企业、游戏公司来说呢，今天就会聆听到，如果您在维多利亚州投资的话，有哪几项金融援助方案可以供您选择。Yeah, both our offices here in China and with our colleagues in Invest Victoria, we are tasked with connecting investors here. With opportunities that we have back home, we know there are challenges in foreign direct investment, both political and economic, and that's why our team is here to help you. 我们在中国的办事处呢，以及在维多利亚的投资局的同事们都肩负着将中国的投资者和维多利亚的机遇联系起来的这一项重要的任务。我们也知道，对于外国投资者来说呢，可能面临着很多政治。和经济方面的挑战，这这也是体现了我们团队帮助大家的价值。Now in the room today, I want to highlight a number of my team who are here, and I would encourage you all to reach out to them during the afternoon tea break. We'll soon be hearing from Michael Bear, who's the senior investment director. We have Jesse Gong as our senior trade director, and online we have Nick Henderson, our deputy commissioner, who is based in Chengdu.
。那今天这个场合当中呢，要特别介绍几几几位我的团队当中的骨干。鼓励大家今天在下午茶的时候呢，呃，大可以可以和他们聊聊天。那么就刚才举手的 Michael 就是白英文先生，就上海的投资总监，还有 Jesse 工，刚才的主持人也是我们的高级贸易经理，以及 Nick， 他是我们驻呃成都的同事。We also have Helen Pike, who is our senior investment director based in Beijing online as well. 还有 Helen Pike 女士，她也是高级投资总监，呃，她现在是常住在北京。Now, I sincerely look forward to today's session, and furthermore, look forward to meeting with some of you、uh, afterwards. Please enjoy the rest of the session, and uh, uh, I hope everything is a great success for you. I sincerely hope that today's session will be a great success for you. I sincerely hope that today's session will be a great success for you. I sincerely hope that today's session will be a great success for you. I sincerely hope that today's session will be a great success for you. I sincerely hope that today's session will be a great success for you. I sincerely hope that today's session will be a great success for you. I sincerely hope that today's session will be a great success for you. I sincerely hope that today's session will be a great success for you. I sincerely hope that today's session will be a great success for you. I sincerely hope that today's session will be a great success for you. Thank you. Hello,大家下午好。我叫Michael，我是澳大利亚维多利亚州政府投资总监。很高兴今天在这里和大家分享维多利亚州的投资机会。今天我们的具体虽然是游戏，但是我想和大家分享一下维州的整体投资改款。稍后我们又会同时来专门和大家介绍游戏的产业。维州位于澳大利亚的东南角，是澳洲最多人的经济地区。在此，我们用三组数据介绍呃来介绍一下维州。第一组数据，维州的土地面积虽然维州的面积。市占全球的百分之三，但是二零一八一九年度，但是一八一九年度，仅墨尔本一个城市就为澳大利亚贡献了百分之四十的GDP。第二组数据是维州的州GDP。好，我不用。如果我不用，能听到吗？在后面可以。我再说，呃，第二组数据是维州的州GDP，连续四年为全好第一，而且经济增速超过了新加坡和香港。第三组数据，墨尔本的房地产市场，它的房产市场成本要比其他的省会城市低百分之二十五。大家都知道，墨尔本作为维多利亚州的省会，连续多年被评为世界上最宜居的城市之一。同时，墨尔本也是澳洲发展最快的城市。根据预测，呃，二零三零年，墨尔本将会为,为澳洲人口最多的城市。到二零五五零年，墨尔本的人口将和伦敦和还有纽约一样多。除了我们刚才提到的墨尔本的宜居性之外，墨尔本也。被誉为澳大利亚的科技之都，墨尔本汇聚了很多的科技人才，同时拥有最具活力的初创企业和放眼投资生态系统。维州的初创企业生态系统估值为三十二亿澳币，在二零一
八条第九面。忘了。啊，在一八零九年度，为就一超过澳大利亚融资市场百分之六十五的份额，在创业和科技融资领域领跑全国，在左下方的公司 logo， 在这儿，<笑>我们可以看出，为就很多多。啊，维州有很多知名的独角兽企业，比如墨尔本中国交友创办的 Air Wallets， 澳洲知名的品牌啊，招聘啊，品牌 Seek。这里我想非常骄傲的介绍一下是 Air Wallets 这个独角兽公司。这个公司的中文名字叫空中云汇。是一个提供跨境支付解决方案的金融呃科技公司。它是在二零一五年有几个在墨尔本留学的中国学生创立的。为了鼓励初创企业，维州政府在二零一六年成了政府自己的初创机构 Launch Victoria。这个机构的目的。呃，是帮助维州的初创以及独角兽企业申请财政补助，啊，和全世界初创公司分享经验，组织科技会议，以推动初创企业生财系统在墨尔本的发展。到二零二零。年 Launchpad 已经拥有两千多家初创企业，在啊左下角这个图给我们展示了在二零二零年维州各个行业初创企业的市场份额，这些初创企业为为维州的经济贡献了四十六亿澳币的收入，而且啊解决了。一万八千九百人的就业需求，在海外投资中有竞争力的商业成本，是一个很有吸吸引力的投资要要素。这个表格向我们展示了澳大利亚几个主要州的商业成本有比，维州的工资税是全国第二低。工业用方程，呃，工业用方程分比，新州第四十四，四十四澳币每平米。非洲的电价和暖价，呃，暖气价格也具有竞争优势。不仅如此，非洲的生活成本要比新州低百分之十八。比 Brisbane 百分之一。现在我们纵观一下墨尔本与世界上其他大城市的商业成本对比，这是一九年的数据。大家可以看到墨尔本位于第三名，而中国的上海、日本的东京、新加坡、澳洲的悉尼和 Brisbane 的商业成本都高于墨尔本。刚才我提到墨尔本被誉为澳大利亚的科技之父，其重要的、其中最重重要的一个原因就是我们拥有世界最好的大学和啊科研机构。在维州，我们有十个大学和十八个高等教育培训机构，以及十三个国际认可的。医学科研机构和十四个农业呃科研中心。不仅如此，我们的拥有南半球最大的痛谷加速器、综合癌症中心和农业生物科学中心。在前不久，维州政府刚刚宣布投入五千万澳币。呃
将建立南半球最大的 mRNA 中心，来应对新冠疫情。就在上周，非洲的呃科学家们。研究除了澳大利亚收的 mRNA 疫苗，这款疫苗将在墨尔本的 mRNA 中心来生产。墨尔本拥有世界知名的大学，像我们知道的墨尔本大学、莫纳什大学、啊，新加墨尔本理工 （RMIT） 大学都位于墨尔本。这些大学培养很多高科技人才。我们可以看到世界很多五百强公司，啊，都和这些高等学府有着合作，比如墨尔本大学和波音公司合作开发复合材料，像中国的香腿集团与莫纳什大学合作开发三 D 打印。飞机引进的项目，我们鼓励和希望中国企业可以和温州的大学共同建立研发机制、研发中心，利用相互的优势，创造出高科技产品，造福行业行业，造福社会。为了鼓励联合研发机制。在维州运营的公司可以同时享受联邦政府和州政府的研发激励财政补贴，其中包括两千啊两百亿澳币的医学研究未来起起进，十万到三百万澳币的短期科研合作资金，作业中心计划项目。拨款以及商业家族计划拨款。Breakthrough Victoria 是一家独立的投资管理公司，成为于二零二一年负责投资和管理维州政府价值二十亿澳元的 Breakthrough Victoria Fund。作为一家独立的维州政府所有的公司 ，Breakthrough Victoria 帮助有。创新者和企业塑造他们的知识创产权，将他们的研究商业化，并协助与相关合作伙伴建立联系。Breakthrough Victoria 致力于投资并产生商业回报，改善生活并为。为州人创造就业机会，我们非常欢迎大家关注这个政府独立的科技创新期呃期基金。下面，我想通过三个领域来介绍墨尔本的科技研发能力。第一个行业就是我们的医疗领域，墨尔本拥有世界前。世界线的生物医疗行业，这其中包括湾北的医学网络、优质的教育资源、丰富的人才储备，以及先呃领先的研究机构。墨尔本拥有四个主要的生物医疗的园区，分别。如有处所示，四个园区的主要介绍，请再看大屏幕。在科技领域里面的第二个，我想给大家介绍一下金融科技行业。像我之前提到的中会啊，中云呃，空中云会 a w a l e x 就是金融科技领域一个非常。突出的成功案例，朱聪吉，维州杜教授公司总价值达三百三十四亿美元，在二零一八一九年度
澳大利亚对初创公司的二十亿美元投资中，贵州的金融科技公司占比近百分之八十。在澳大利亚排名前二十位的高高科技公司中，有一半以上都将总部是在墨尔本。这些公司是在贵州投资的中资企业。大家可以看到，从国际到民企，从旗舰到电厂，这些公司都选择墨尔本作为他们的狮子，呃，他们的狮头地点。像阿里巴巴、滴滴、海信这些我们素质的企业，都把墨尔本作为他们的奥心总部。下面我想和大家呃分享一个中国投资案例：滴滴出行。滴滴出行是全球领先的移动交通平台。该公司为遍布亚洲、拉丁美国和美洲和澳大利亚的超过五点五亿用户，提供基于 APP 的交通和生活服务。那我们贵州政府为为滴滴出行提供了哪些服务呢？我们为滴滴出行提供的服务包括正式协助介绍当地市场的商业行情，以及呃商业机会。我们为滴滴出行组织了多场呃与当地合作伙伴的商。商务企呃洽谈，以及商务考察，我们协助滴滴啊相关许可呃证申请，使滴滴在贵州的运营服务顺利开展，同时安排滴滴高层与贵州部长及会议。当然，这些工作，这是我们的滴滴提供服务的一部分。事实上，我们中国与墨尔本的同学一起共同为滴滴，等于澳大利亚，做出许多工作。呃，在这里我就不一一列举了。最后，我想强调的一点的是。我们提供所有的服务都是免费的。最后，我想介绍一下我们的投资局——维州维多利亚州投资局，隶属于维州财政部，是为啊，是为海外投资者提供啊咨询和服务的政府机构。我们优秀的团队可以为投资者提供免费的、高效的、全网呃全方位的咨询服务，包括当地选择、商业案例、建建议、协调各级政府的机构、且当地公司商务啊对接、协助。申请财政补贴等等。那 President 已经说过了，维多利亚州呃政府在全球有二十三个代表处，在中国有五个代表处，分别位于北京、南京、上海、成都啊和香港。中国团队负责投资的同时，啊，包括我。还有 Helen Pay 在北京 ，Derek Lee 在香港，还有杨子林和 And Annie Jiang 在墨尔本。我们分分别啊，啊，结束了。谢谢大家。如果您的任何问题，可以最后联系我。谢谢。那我们再次感谢 Michael， 今天是他第一次用中文做了这么长的一个演讲啊，谢谢你做的非常好。那刚才大家也听 Michael 介绍了为什么墨尔本一直是一个受投资人青睐的这样的一个投资的目的地。那呃，大家也对这个墨尔本有更多的一些了解。
那接下来的话呢，我们跟大家分享一下，如果您在墨尔本投资游戏产业的话，我们将如何能够真实的协助到你？嗯，我们将回到大屏幕来听听 Craig Harrison， 维州政府投资局高级总监，以及 Caroline Pitcher， 维州政府电影局 CEO， 来和我们分享政府的税收激励的政策。谢谢。So the Australian Commonwealth Government's Digital Games Tax Offset, or DGTO, commencing on the 1st of July 2022, will make Australia a highly competitive destination and create unparalleled business opportunities for companies keen to expand into the Asia-Pacific region. To recognise this opportunity window, the Victorian Government acknowledges there are opportunities to attract new companies into the existing and dynamic ecosystem, and so we're able to offer incentives to help you establish yourself here. We have a new three-year strategy to accelerate your investment into Melbourne. What we want from you is to commit to establishing your studio, your operation here before the end of June 2022. And in return, then we offer incentives based on the number of jobs you employ in Victoria across a three-year period. The total value support depends on the number and skills of those jobs. Uh, we have an allocation of uh, six million dollars of support over three years, specifically to support these businesses looking at the offset. So at a federal level, um, the co commencing, as I mentioned, on the 1st of July 2022, is uh, the, the Commonwealth, the Australian government, is offering a 30% refundable tax offset. These generous benefits offered by the Australian government are in addition to Invest Victoria's job incentive and Film Victoria's Victorian screen incentive for digital games. And I ha I'll hand over to Caroline to expand on that shortly. The team responsible within the Australian government is still undertaking industry consultation to build a robust framework. So details on the qualifying Australian Games expenditure is yet to be finalised. Uh, what I can say is a company must spend a minimum of five hundred thousand dollars, that's Australian dollars, to qualify. In addition to the rebate, it's worth mentioning that the federal government has committed to potentially fast-tracking global talent visas, as well as providing temporary activity visas for studios that want to relocate key staff for up to eighteen months. So the Victorian government has a dedicated branch that support you with these visa inquiries and application, and um, we have represent representatives uh, who can uh, answer any questions and answers if you want to uh, delve a bit deep into that in terms of on this this webinar or, or following this as well. So um, great pleasure to hand over to Caroline to speak more about the big screen and Film Victoria's games funding programs. Thanks so much, Craig, and welcome everyone. Good to see you this morning, which is our evening. And I think uh, you can tell that I'm sitting here uh, in, a, in a bit of sun. It's a gorgeous sunset here in Melbourne this evening. Um, I wanted to let you know a little bit more about Vic Screen, which is the four year close to $200 million strategy for screen based sectors, which is very much inclusive of the digital game sector, as well as film and television production, animation, post production and visual effects. So the Victorian government is, of course, a strong supporter of the state's digital game sector. Uh, in May this year, the Victorian government launched Vic Screen, which, as I said, was close to I always like to say close to 200 million rather than 191.5 million uh, four year strategy to put Victoria at the forefront of the global screen entertainment boom. Now, not including that is uh, the fact that we are also constructing a very large soundstage to complement our um, film and television studios here, which will be launching uh, in January next year, which is also an additional $46 million uh, capital investment in uh, film and television screen capital. Uh, attracting international projects to the state is what we do <coughs> at Film Victoria, uh, and we like to follow a uh, a process of creating a strong pipeline of secure work for local screen workers and specialist businesses is a key focus for Vic Screen, the strategy at Film Victoria. Games is of course included and I think as was mentioned in the introductions we have been supporting in terms of investment, cash investment in games development for over 25 years. So we have a new incentive as well as supporting local games IP development and that new incentive is to attract uh, digital games projects 
to be undertaken here in Victoria with Victorian based businesses, whether they're internationally or locally owned and operated. We expanded the Victorian Screen Incentive to attract these projects for digital games to Victoria and we launched that as a pilot program in spring last year, which is our September last year. Um, we were provided annual funding, um, which we were fully expended within six months, generating well over $28 million worth of work in a very short period of time. Through VSI, Film Victoria provides competitive grants to attract Footloose Games projects that will that need to spend a minimum of a million dollars. That minimum of a million dollars we are actually reconsidering now that the federal government has also announced their offset fund, which is going to be launched, I think, as Craig said, on the 1st of July next year. Their minimum spend is 500,000. <coughs> we are looking to make some changes there to reduce that 1 million down to 500,000 to make it easier for all. So not only would you be getting 30% by the federal government on every dollar spent in Victoria on a digital game, but we would also contribute uh, on occasion up to uh, a capped amount of 10%. Um, this program, as I said, already has generated significant investment in our local games uh, community. Um, and we've been working on some of the world's biggest titles and uh, we can speak to Tom uh, and also Greg about that shortly. These grants are offered on a project by project basis. Um, and as I said, are calculated on a percentage of the expenditure and also the jobs and other benefits that you create within our um, games community. So we're open, we're financed, and we're ready to hear from you. And you can find me uh, easily on our website at Film Victoria um, and get in touch with our team that is willing to help you with the application process. Uh, VSI, as we've said, can be combined with the federal government offset. So that is 30% from the federal government plus uh, our co contribution. And additionally, in terms of our local uh, independent game sector, which is incredibly talented in terms of developing their own games concepts. Uh, we have been funding them for over 25 years and have a different program for those uh, games projects where we have a funding pool that was actually doubled in this last uh, funding period through the strategy that we have spoken about um, today. So we actually provide uh, development funding um, between $150,000 to $300,000 for local games development, where the original uh, creative concept is originated from Victoria. Uh, and we also have introduced three distinct application strands for that local games investment fund, which is prototype, vertical slice and production. Um, and from this, we saw an increase in prototype funding also, which is often where developers find it hard to secure initial investment. So that really enables them to uh, scope out their original um, creative concept and then get out there to investors and publishers to sell their concept into the marketplace. Um, with that, I will throw back uh, to you, Tim. So the Carolyn, 他今天将和大家分享维州游戏产业的情况以及游戏投资的案例分析。Thank you, Fran. Thank you, and a very, very warm welcome to our guests today. Uh, I'm calling in from Melbourne in Victoria, uh, the home of digital games. Thank you. So, as I've said, Victoria is the hub for digital games. I'm excited to be presenting to you some facts and figures about the excitement of the games industry here in uh, Melbourne. Thank you, Cassie. Next slide. So as you can see on the screen, uh, Victoria 
and Creative Victoria in particular has set a pathway for the next four years to develop its creative industries. 这是我们下一个四年的创意产业战略 And of course, digital games is a key pillar within the creative industries book. And we have been on a growth trajectory that is quite significant over the last couple of years. 那数字产业呢，也是创意产业当中，呃，包括游戏呢，这是一个重要的支柱。在过去几年，我们已经看到一个很强劲的上升态势。Creative industries uh, in total are worth around $23 billion in gross value add and constitute around 8% to our Victorian economy. So as you can see, our role really is to ensure that our game studios are successful, that they can ramp up in terms of skills, that they have access to travel grants through our friends at Film Victoria. And also uh, we work very closely with them around international engagement. And if you are interested in looking at the Creative State 25, which is our four year strategy, uh, that's available from our website and the address is on the slide. Thank you, Cassie. Next slide. So as I've mentioned, we do have a very vibrant digital games ecosystem here in Victoria with over 170 studios, which represent 53% of the Australian studios. It's a very busy portfolio. It keeps us hopping and we host major games events across the year. And I'll be very pleased to share with you very shortly a video about this year's Melbourne International Games Week. Thank you. Cassie, would you mind playing the video for us? Melbourne International Games Week is a collection of events and they have to do with games. So we've got things like huge events like PAX Australia or Game Connect Asia Pacific, a local industry conference, but even things like Free Plays Parallels, which is a showcase of some of Australia and New Zealand's best and wildest, weirdest indie games. It's all on show for you here during spring in Melbourne. It's for people that make games, it's for people that play games, uh, it's for catching up with friends, it's, it's learning, it's, it's such a fun week. Every single day, every single night, there's something on for everyone. Games Week was initiated about five years ago to really bring together the amazing events that were already happening in Melbourne under one umbrella. The first Games Week was mostly just um, GCAP and PAX and Unite and with a few little events here and there. And over the years, it's expanded and expanded and expanded sort of become a lot more inclusive to not just the commercial devs who are there, but sort of 
pulled in um, a lot of the sort of smaller niche communities, the sort of art games and students and more journalists and consumers. It's trying to give everyone who has anything to do with games a chance to sort of come together and learn from each other. It's one of the most important times of the year. It's the time when you're buzzing with excitement and you can't sleep every night because there's just so many interesting things going on and you can't wait to see all your friends and meet new people. This year, with a global pandemic and everything that's happened, it's amazing how important Melbourne International Games Week was. We needed it more this year than perhaps any other year. It was really invigorating for me. We were going through a really tough time at League of Geeks, obviously with working remotely and being in lockdown. It honestly was just such a shining light for me and it reminded me of how great the community is here. During sort of virtual Games Week, I think that we saw record-breaking numbers and enabled events like the Australian Game Developer Awards to be seen by many more people than they normally would. I attended a number of talks and I just felt like, wow, I really hope I get to meet all these people because their work is so interesting and they seem so committed to inclusion and diversity in addition to being really like technical and highly skilled developers. Melbourne International Games Week is unlike any other games event anywhere around the world and, and, and I've been to lots of them. If you want to really understand what's happening underneath the hood, International Games Week in Melbourne and Chica are the places to be. Now, you know, you see an, a huge wide range of international speakers and international companies as well taking part. So I think it can help you connect with a lot of industry leaders and, and key industry people from not just Australia, but from all over the world. We see a lot of games being announced, even games getting demoed for the first time. Don't sleep on it, come, because this is one of the funnest, the most deeply engaged, and the most well-planned events that I have been to all year long. Thanks, Cassie. So I hope that gives everyone a little bit of a taste of Melbourne International Games Week. So this year we had over 50 events, all digital, all, verb, all virtual rather, um, and we had over 5 million impressions across the course of the 10 days. Our three-day industry conference, uh, which was so well attended, we had over 1,200 delegates, and we also uh, had a dedicated STEAM page. For those of you familiar with STEAM, uh, we had over 80 of our independent Victorian game studios featured uh, games, and we had over a million hits in the first 48 hours. We had an eSports summer, we had an investment day, and we also had uh, two education summits. So as one of our friends in the video said, don't just think about it, come on down the first week in October every year and it's brilliant. So 
礼拜一前疫情过去，都欢迎大家每一年十月的第一周来墨尔本参与国际游戏周。Thank you, Cassie. Next slide. I couldn't let this occasion pass without mentioning that Victoria is the e-sports capital in Australia. We have Fortress, which is Australia's first and largest multi-storey dedicated e-sports venue. And we have the Melbourne eSports Open, including the Intel Masters Series, which runs in September and is the largest event of its kind in the Australia Pacific region. 那我们也会主办呃每一年的英特尔大师赛系列，那这是非常重要的一场电子竞技公开赛，是在九月份举行。Thank you, Cassie. Next slide. So, what we can promise you is a vibrant ecosystem, as I've said previously, and plenty of support from our colleagues at InvestVic, LaunchVic, and CreativeVic. 那大家今天听了我简短的演讲，应该已经感受到了，在维多利亚本州，在墨尔本这个充满活力的数字游戏生态，嗯，系统也会，呃，也期待大家能够享受到来自你们创意局以及投资局的同事的支持与陪伴。I'll be back later with the panel, so please have any questions you'd like to ask ready to go, and I'll be delighted to answer them. Thank you. 我等一下还会参加小组讨论，所以大家如果对我有什么问题的话，请届时向我提出，谢谢。Thank you, friend. 那本土成长的工作室和世界领先的游戏制作公司，使维多利亚州成为了游戏发展的优质目的地。嗯、um, ，到底结果是不是这样的啊？那在这一点上，我想邀请 Root 59和 Bond Labs 两家公司，将接下来用他们的发言来跟我们告诉这个答案。呃 ，Root 59是一个位于墨尔本的独立视觉小说游戏开发团队，去年开发并制作了广受好评的游戏《n a t u r a l Barista》。那首先，我们有请 Kevin Chan 和 Joe Liu。Kevin 是公司的创始人，也是《n a t u r a l Barista》游戏的开发者。Joe is this kind of game's 3D effect artist. Thank you, Kevin and Joe. Hello， 大家好，这是我们的作品《终点咖啡馆》。《终点咖啡馆》是一款借由二次元作品与电影的启发而成，具开创性的 3D 视觉小说。故事描述一位与墨尔本市中心开咖啡馆的死灵术士麦迪。游戏借由独特的视觉表现手法，赢得了多种奖项。
大家好，我是 Joe， 嗯、um, ，Route 59的数位美术领导。嗨、hey, ，大家好，我是 Kevin，Route 59的 CEO。Route 59是一间位于墨尔本的独立游戏工作室，它在2016年由一群 RMIT 的学生创建而成。你可以看见照片中的我们，在当时还只是一群社会新鲜人。<笑>一间由毕业生组成的独立工作室是如何？在国际舞台上站稳脚步的，我们有幸能与一些优秀的投资者们共事，其中包括了。我们最初的协力者是一间中国公司野岛游戏。由于我们的人员熟悉中国文化，也因为我们的游戏适合亚洲市场。打从一开始，我们就对与中国出版商合作保持高度的兴趣。有了野岛游戏早期的投资，我们依序与其他投资者签下合作关系。Apple Arcade 目前游戏已登陆该平台，游戏本身也曾出展任天堂 Indie World 的节目。其他包括索尼和 Xbox 游戏通行证都曾表示过合作的意愿。有了这些资源，我们最终得以完成这款游戏。接下来，请欣赏我们最新的介绍片。Victorian Games Sector 提供的协助中最有帮助的一项属于 Film Victoria 的相关业务。位于维多利亚区的游戏工作室通常会寻求 Victor 啊、uh, Film Victoria 的赞助，我们也不例外。事实上，我们接下来的计划也希望能获得 Film Victoria 的初步资源。近年来 ，Victorian Games Sector 协助创造了无数的高品质游戏，其中有许多成功进军世界的舞台。对于像我们这样的新进工作室来说，也希望能借由这个机会与中国的出版商缔结更密切的合作关系。以上是我们的联络方式，请有兴趣的朋友，呃，随时联系。谢谢。Hi,、right, uh, I think that's、um, us. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin and Chow. 那作为当地的维州工作室，非常感谢你们的分享，也很感谢你们对我们维州有呃相对较成熟投资环境的这样一个认可。那接下来的介绍公司是 Founder Labs。这是一家世界领先的增强现实公司，在游戏、生物安全、医疗和职业健康与安全等一系列领域开发增强现实、人工智能和物联网技术。<咳>那接下来我们有请 Jonathan Marshall from Bondar Labs. Thank you, Jonathan. Over to you. Thank you very much, and welcome to everybody. We are in a very different space in some respects. We develop games for industry. This is normally referred to as serious games. 
那和刚才的那家公司完全不同的一方面呢，虽然我们也是游戏开发公司，我们是为行业开发非常严肃的游戏的一家公司。This is now including virtual reality and augmented reality immersive technologies. 这里面呢会拿过增强现实、虚拟现实等最新的科技。Cassie, next slide and video, please. Thank you. Next slide, Cassie. That short introductory video was a serious game we developed for a global nonprofit to train farmers in Asia and Africa how to better utilize uh, their uh, pesticides and herbicides to grow better crops. 那刚才大家看到这个简短的视频，就是我们工作室的一个很典型的作品。这是为了一个国际性的非盈利机构，为亚洲和非洲的农民开发的一个专门用于收割、管理、病虫害以及除草控制的模拟器游戏，来教他们使用哪些工具去更好的管理病虫害和收割。Honda Labs, we started in 2014. And we were originally based in Brisbane, Australia,、uh, but because of the value of moving to Melbourne, the capital for the video games industry, I moved my team from Brisbane to Melbourne to be in the centre of the games industry in Australia. 那我们公司呢是成立于二零一四年，原来呢是在澳大利亚布里斯班。那之后呢，我们是看到了在墨尔本的价值，嗯。就将整个团队全都迁移到了墨尔本，来享受这作为国际数字游戏产业中心的地位。In Melbourne, we have access to world-class software engineers and game developers, as well as a deep creative industry ecosystem to help build and support the development of our products. 那在墨尔本呢，我们就可以享受到这里全球一流的软件工程师、游戏开发者以及一个非常呃有深度的呃高有创意的生态环境，能够为我们带来的呃在游戏开发方面的巨大价值。As earlier speakers have attested to, Victoria has a very supportive government for the games and immersive technology. And creative industry space, and it is actually a perfect time to invest. 那就像之前的呃嘉宾已经分享的那样，维多利亚州呢，对于我们游戏开发呃企业会提供非常巨大的支持。在这里呢，我们能够享受到最好的政府支持以及各方面经济上的嗯资助。And I should add. Four members of my development team are all originally from China. 那我还要特别提到的是，我团队里有四位非常重要股东之臣都是来自于中国。Next slide, Cassie. So what do we do? We essentially apply video game and immersive technologies. 
to solve industry problems. Developing serious games to train workers in industry. Over the last eight years, we have developed virtual reality and simulation training for. <coughs> Biosecurity training, food safety training, electrical training, work safety training, and product quality assurance training. Next slide, Cassie. In 2017, we met with the president of the Chinese Academy of Inspection and Quarantine. And we established a joint venture, ZJ Bondi Labs Intelligent Technologies. This collaboration, working closely with our Australian developers, we now have 30 developers in Beijing. And yet leverage uh, and benefiting the work we have done in Australia, for example, biosecurity inspection training. These products are now being adapted for the Chinese market. Next slide, Cassie. The area we are also focusing a lot of attention is building augmented reality technologies for smart glasses. So our vision is augmenting workers, not replacing workers. So, for example, we are building these technologies with artificial intelligence to assist workers make better decisions. The areas we are focusing on are remote auditing, food safety inspection, product quality inspection, and remote equipment maintenance. So, although very different to entertainment video games, all my team are game developers using game technologies to build immersive solutions for industry. Uh, 
工呃作用的，但是我们。所开发的游戏呢是严肃游戏，他们是在行业当中有广泛应用。Next slide, Cassie, and please play the video. 接下来我们再来看一个视频。Side, Cassie, and thank you, everybody. That, 刚刚大家看到的就是一个新的我们的呃作品的展示。谢谢大家。